Well, good morning, everyone. Yesterday, our nation witnessed uh, an attempted assassination on a presidential candidate. And as we know, uh, the assassin's bullet uh, failed to take out uh, his intended target, and for that we give thanks to God. I um, can't even imagine where our nation would be right now. But it did strike uh, others in the crowd, uh, and at least one innocent person has perished uh, by this evil act of hatred. As the investigation unfolds over the coming days, weeks, and months, um, we must pause, I think, as a nation and reflect on the, des- uh, on the dire circumstances uh, in which we find ourselves. Uh, like always, it is time uh, for men and women of faith to stand up uh, and to stand out from the crowd and be an example to a watching world uh, that is fearful, uh, that is filled with hate, um, and that is uh, searching for hope. And that's uh, what we can provide. We can disagree with people. We can even disagree uh, strongly, vehemently sometimes. But we must always respect and value the image of God in those around us. We must guard uh, our words that they may not add to any harmful national rhetoric. And we must expect better from those who lead us and we must expect better from those who seek to inform us of um, the news in our world. Beyond political involvement on a local um, and state and national level, Christian people must heed the words of the Apostle Paul uh, and really uh, put them into practice. This is what the Apostle Paul wrote to uh, Timothy who was his son in the faith, he says this in 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that petitions and prayers, intercessions and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. Paul's instructions uh, to Christians, both in his day and subsequently our day, are very clear. Pray for your leaders even for those with whom you disagree. And continue, as you do, as you pray for your leaders, continue to focus on communicating the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone you know. He is our hope. If, um, if we seek or desire to live in a peaceable society, it is imperative. It's imperative that we pray for our public leaders, those who serve us both locally and nationally. And at the same time, we must commit ourselves to making disciples of everyone within our spheres of influence. Regardless of how low the public discord, uh, discourse um, becomes at times, we must remember, we must all remember that our primary struggle is not with people. The Apostle Paul again writes these words, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. Stand therefore with truth like a belt around your waist. Righteousness like armor on your chest and your feet sandaled with the readiness for the gospel of peace. Pray at all times, he concludes, in the spirit with every prayer and request. Stay alert with all uh, perseverance and intercession for all the saints. 
And today, I think it's appropriate that we, um, as followers of Jesus and as human beings, uh, seek the face of God in prayer. And so, if you would, please uh, bow your heads for prayer. Father, we humbly bow our hearts in this moment seeking your mercy for ourselves, for our neighbors and friends, for those who are just fellow human beings, for our nation. And Lord, we confess that as a nation, we have in large part abandoned you. Your name may be on our lips, but oftentimes our hearts are far from you. And therefore, we ask for your forgiveness. When we have harbored malice, we ask for your forgiveness. When unrighteous anger has festered within us, we ask for your forgiveness. For any of our actions, Father, that have added to this precarious moment, please forgive us. We ask that there would be a spiritual revival across this nation and that the people in this nation would turn to the gospel of Jesus Christ in whom is our only hope. Father, may each of us reflect on the sinfulness of our own hearts and thoughts and seek your mercy and your forgiveness. Lord, through this moment, may you give us the wisdom and the ability to be bridge builders as we seek to share the message of Jesus with a hurting, confused, and angry world. Father, we lift um, to you those who lead our nation, for those in office and for those seeking office in this election year. Keep each of them safe, Father. Guard over their families, their children, their spouses, their grandchildren. Father, we thank you for those um, public officials who are genuine disciples of Jesus, who serve in public office, and we pray for the salvation of those who do not follow Jesus in those same roles. Convict their hearts and draw them to the saving power of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I, I thank you for the men and women who defend us from threats abroad and threats from within. Thank you for their willingness to serve and protect and defend our liberties and our very lives. May all who seek to harm be thwarted. May those who scheme evil plans and plots be exposed. Lord, as the world watches on, we pray for your protection on our nation and on those who defend her. And now, Father, we ask that you would make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.